Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you that's all about COD 2016, or what I'm going to be calling Space Warfare for now. The gameplay you're seeing right now, though, is Black Ops 3. Going to be using mostly the Pharaoh here on Skyjack. Going to do really good in the beginning, a little slow in the middle, and then very good at the end. Might have some other clips if I talk for too long. Going to go over the news about the next Call of Duty game briefly, and then move into a big segment of opinions on it. So if you haven't already heard, a very reliable leaker by the name of Shinobi said that the next COD is going to be very far into the future, and by very far, we're talking extremely far, hundreds, maybe thousands of years into the future, to the point where it, quote, makes Black Ops 3 setting look like the Stone Age, and it's mostly based around space combat. Of note, Infinity Ward has also been tweeting out some space-themed stuff lately, including, like, a, a guy in outer space, I think back in January, and some other little puns and whatnot. He cleared up a few days later, saying that the game is 100% nothing like Ghost, when people were asking if it was like the space station mission, which is the first one in Ghost, and said that it will feature, quote, combat in spaceships. He did not mention if it was combat between spaceships or if it was just levels like you're a little soldier guy running around into spaceship, but the community ran rampant with it and pretty much just assumed spaceship combat. And it has a central hub area that's a form of a living ship. He compared it to Battlestar Galactica's little central hub, like their little docking bay. But when you talk about a living ship, I want to think about Farscape. That's kind of all the real subjective news that there is, is that a reliable source, a very reliable one, says the next COD's way in the future, like thousands of years, and it's about spaceships and lasers and who knows what all. And honestly, I believe this because all signs point toward it being real. So far, it hasn't been debunked. The source is very accurate. Infinity Ward is getting clever with all these little puns, and nobody from PR or Activision or anything has stepped in to squash the rumor, so my suspicion is that this is actually real. Also, I did a trademark search a little while ago. You can do this. The United States Office of Trademarks lets you search trademarks. Uh, the idea is that so that you don't accidentally use somebody else's. But they had a trademark on the word Space Warfare in 2010 up until 2013, so it expired about three years ago. But Call of Duty Space Warfare was trademarked, which means at some point in Call of Duty history, they were working on it, they were developing it. The trademark is no longer in use, so I find it very unlikely that it's going to be called Space Warfare, but it's easy enough to call it that for now. That's all for the objective part of this video. That's all the hard news and facts. Now we're going to move on to some objective stuff where I can offer you some opinions and actual commentary. And be honest with you guys, I'm kind of scared about this because it is such a radical departure from traditional Call of Duty. Every game is always getting a little bit different, like Ghost is a depressing future, uh, Advanced Warfare is a version of the future, Black Ops 3 is a slightly even further version of the future. So we're getting more and more into future combat and less and less about, say, the modern warfare that made the series so popular to begin with, but it's always been about military stuff. It's always been about the military in World War II, in Vietnam, during the Cold War, during modern combat, near future combat. It's always told a very military-driven, America, fuck yeah, gung-ho kind of story, but now it's getting further and further out there, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing because the core audience was initially attracted to the military stuff. Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3 have been very polarizing for being too sci-fi, too spacey, too crazy for the you know average Joe to get into, and I don't think this is going to be doing it any more favors. Also, I don't think that spaceship combat will be something that most people will associate with being traditional to Call of Duty. Even future combat with lasers and stuff can be COD-like, but combat in spaceships seems a little bit silly. However, I do 100% love sci-fi stuff. As a person, as not a Call of Duty player, I'm a huge sci-fi fangirl. I've read so many sci sci-fi books, uh, authors from Niven to Asimov to even cheekier stuff if you want to get into it, but uh, I love sci-fi stuff, love spaceships, love far future stuff, love the ideas and technology, so I may end up liking this game, even if it's not what we would call a traditional Call of Duty game, and there's lots of cool ideas that you could explore. For instance, there's the idea of transhumanism. For those of you that know what it is, you're probably, this is going to be the baby explanation, but for those of you that have never heard of transhumanism, the idea is that if the human race survives thousands or hundred thousands of years, that we will eventually transcend humanity and no longer be be human. We will either evolve into something else that is very much so like a human, but not a human, because that's how evolution works, or that we will merge with technology, or that we will change our biology in some way to transcend humanity, and you become not exactly a human, and
and then the idea becomes how do you deal with these people? What were their values be? Will they have conflicts with regular humans, etc, etc. Another fun idea if you're doing space combat is time dilation. That is the 100% sound and accurate theory that Einstein came up with, that as you move faster to the, closer to the speed of light, as, you're, as you accelerate closer to the speed of light, your localized time begins moving slower and slower and slower, and there's a couple of stories, I believe, uh, the, I believe Heinlein's Forever War, and there's an anime about this, about people that would spend large amounts of time traveling to opposite ends of the galaxy for trade or for war or whatever, and they would age hundreds of thousands or thousands of years and return home and find everything different or their relatives dead or something like that. So that can make for some very interesting narratives that people kind of leapfrogging through time. If we're dealing with space stuff, you might as well have aliens, not necessarily like the cryptids and ghosts, but you could have legit aliens because if we're in space, why not? Who cares? A thousand different things you can address from aliens, from racism to friendship, acceptance, different values. And there's also the idea of maybe having a universal government against local values. You can kind of see this in the works from, oh man, what was the guy's name who wrote Ender's Game? I should know this. But anyway, uh, in that book, they had people go out and colonize planets, but they would have like Catholics on one planet and Protestants on another, and then on an all Muslim planet, and then a capitalist planet. And they would have these sort of local values that very much so clashed with the universal government or the galactic government, so to speak. If you're going to talk about pure gameplay elements, that was all story stuff. If we're doing far future, like way into the future, that means it's 100% sci-fi or magic. So there's pretty much no cap on weapon capabilities or abilities in general. Lasers, sure, why not? Needle or like weapon that homes you down and goes for you, why not? Go for it. Insta-kill, sniper rifle, rail guns, you know, let's cook them from the inside out. Teleportation, flying, it basically doesn't matter, nanites or whatever. And based on the leaks, spaceship combat could be a thing, either in campaign or in multiplayer. And if it's in multiplayer, I imagine it'll be something more like Battlefront, kind of like there's certain maps in Star Wars Battlefront where you fight in spaceships. And there's like people on the ground and you you know they don't really interact they're kind of like AI all the all the real human people are in the air in spaceship combat so that could be fun or if we're doing the no man's sky thing which the original leaker did compare the game to own your own planet universal exploration there's a lot of good ideas that could go on here it kind of just like raises the cap and nobody can tell you that's unrealistic because we're talking thousands of years into the future and you could also do when it comes to like regular on the well, what we would say infantry combat it's definitely not going to be boots on the ground anymore more. You can do zero gravity combat where you float around and you have to fight in a complete three space. It really screws up your orientation. I think kind of like the really hardcore uh, space combat simulators. We can do the same thing on the ground or in, as an infantryman if there is no gravity. You'd have to manage your thrusters or whatnot. It could get very complicated. Or you can have low gravity combat where you jump really high, kind of like you have moon shoes. And this would pretty much totally change the rules of engagement and force you to learn a different set of gravity for each map. Grenade throw and some kind of stuff. Imagine it's kind of like the training that Ender went through in the Ender's Game book. If you're familiar with, strongly recommend the book over the movie. Uh, if you're dealing with low and uh, or no gravity, you could have floating water, kind of like the trial missions or the uh, what was it, the free running in Black Ops 3. But in zero gravity, a pool of water is just going to sit there, kind of like as a big bubble in the middle. You can fly through it. Or if you're fighting in a spaceship with air, oxygen, you can shoot out the windows and make a vacuum that'll suck people out the window or suffocate them because there's no air in the ship. A lot of different fun things you can do, a lot of different ways to kill people, a lot of different ways to change up the game and make it very fun, which is good. It shows potential. There's ideas, there's hope, there's a dozen different things. But a lot of you are probably listening and saying, man, that doesn't sound like very much fun because some people honest to goodness, for whatever reason, and I'm not judging you on this, they just don't like sci-fi. They don't like lasers. They don't like spaceships. They don't like zero or low gravity because it's confusing or 3D movement, and they don't want aliens or time dilation in their games. They want a military shooter, and it doesn't seem like they're going to be getting that, so we're definitely going to have some pissed off fans there. On the upside, this is the first time that Infinity Ward has had a real three years to make a new game for next generation. If you remember during Modern Warfare 3, their studio kind of split split in half and they had that big uh, upset with, with Zampella and them and they went on to make Respawn Studios and they had to call in Sledgehammer and they had this enormous crunch time to grind out MW3. And then they had two years to make Call of Duty Ghost, which had to launch on, I think, eight different systems, including what was last gen 
and next gen and Sony and Microsoft didn't send in like the hardware specs until the last minute and then there were issues with the Xbox One and there was all kind of nonsense like that so that was really punishing on them to make eight versions of the game for even some for consoles that weren't out yet and they only had two years to do it so this time around Infinity Ward's got a real full three years current gen technology PC everything's explained and good, and good to go so I'm not really worried about that but I am concerned about the game I'm really concerned that space combat might not be the future of Call of Duty, even if Space Combat or Call of Duty Space Warfare turns out to be a fantastic game and plays good, which I hope for, honestly do, uh, it probably won't feel like what most people think of when they think about a Call of Duty game, and that really worries me. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.